So almost everybody that I know leaving Windows to Linux does it for privacy reasons. Um, this makes it easy to assume a switch will guarantee privacy. Sadly, this is not the case. And in this video, I will explain why. If you watch till the very end and decide to make a switch, you'll be able to avoid the trap of slipping back into Windows-like telemetry. And also, at the very end of this video, I will introduce you to the most privacy but user-friendly Linux distro you might start with. So first, Linux equals privacy is a myth. The reality is that Linux is not a magic privacy pill. Yes, I get that it's open source, but what this means is that anyone can peek under the hood and see how it works. Open source has never been an automatic guarantee for privacy. You might want to think of Linux as a blank canvas and it's up to you to paint it with the privacy respecting tools and practices that you want. Now to take this a step further, not all Linux distros are created equal. A lot of them have um, a privacy first approach Why some come preloaded with proprietary blobs, telemetry like features or even third party trackers. Just out of curiosity, have you ever assumed Linux meant total privacy? Be honest and drop a comment below. I would love to hear your thoughts. Talking about choice leads me to the next point. Privacy pitfalls in Linux. So you might take Ubuntu, for example, back in 2012, it shipped with a feature that sent your local desktop searches straight to Amazon. And yes, you did hear that right, Amazon. So it was open source, but the default settings were anything but private. And it's not just Ubuntu. Many distros come with pre-installed proprietary software like NVIDIA drivers or firmware blobs that you can't fully audit. Even third-party repositories can sneak in non-free software or worse, hidden trackers. But let's not blame privacy pitfalls on every other person because you might still shoot yourself in the foot. Here is exactly what I mean. You may install software like um, Google Chrome or Discord once you do, congrats, you've just invited big tech back into your life. It even gets worse if you stick with the default settings of these tools, because that way you're simply leaving the door wide open for data leaks. The fact is that Linux gives you the perfect tools for privacy, but it doesn't enforce them by default. It's like handing you a lock, but leaving it up to you to actually use it. So. If you're not careful, you could end up right back in the same privacy nightmare you were trying to escape. By the way, what's the most privacy invasive app you've ever caught yourself using on Linux? Let me know in the comments. The third thing I'll talk about is the fact that even open source can fail. I've heard too many tech YouTubers tout open source as the privacy gold standard. These remarks sit Linux and other open source tools as infallible. But in reality, open source does not always equal privacy friendly. Take some apps on FDroid, for example. They are open source, right? But the moment you dig deeper, you'll find that some of them include proprietary trackers. And yes, these are hidden inside supposedly privacy apps. For instance, we have Neopipe. This YouTube alternative once included a proprietary crash reporting tool called Hockey App. And Slide for Reddit had Google Firebase analytics in some builds. These trackers might seem harmless, but they are a constant reminder that open source doesn't always mean no tracking. And then of course we have the issue with reproducible builds. If you have never heard of this, it's simply the idea that the binaries you run should match the source code you see. But guess what? Many open source projects fail this test. This means the app you're using could have hidden changes, backdoors, trackers, you name it. Even Signal that used to be the gold standard for encrypted messages had a 
dirty little secret. It relies on Google Play services for notifications. So while your messages are encrypted, your metadata is not so much. And to be fair, auditing code is very, very hard. Unless you're a coding wizard, you're trusting the maintainers to do the right thing. But here's the question. Even if the code is open, who actually is checking it for backdoors or trackers? The truth is open source is a tool, not a guarantee. And if you're not careful, it can fail as hard as any other proprietary software you know. And this is why I'll always say open source is transparent, but it's only as good as the eyes watching it. I hope you agree with this. The big question now is, how do you use Linux for maximum privacy? If you have been following till this point, you understand why merely switching to Linux does not guarantee you privacy. So what's the solution? First, choose the right distro. Not all distros are created equal. For maximum privacy, go with something like Debian, but disable the non-free repos. Or if you want something more hardcore, try Tails for anonymity or use KubeOS for compartmentalization. If you're new to Linux and want a balance, Fedora Workstation or Linux Mint are great user-friendly options with solid privacy defaults. If you're switching from Windows, you may also want to watch our tier list video where we rank Linux distros based on ease for first timers. Advice number two, dish proprietary software. Now, this is not negotiable. Swap Microsoft Office for LibreOffice, Chrome for Firefox with privacy tweaks like disabling telemetry or enabling HTTPS only mode and use Signal without Google Play services. Advice number three, harden your system. Enable a firewall, you could use UFW. Um, also encrypt everything. Set up locks for full disk encryption during installation. Also disable unnecessary services. So for instance, if you don't need DNS resolution, turn off system resolved. And advice number four, audit your system. You may use Wireshark to monitor network traffic and spot anything suspicious. For Android apps, tools like Exodus privacy can reveal hidden trackers. But here's the thing. Privacy is a process, not a one-time setup. You need to stay vigilant, keep your system updated, and regularly review your settings. Linux gives you great tools, but it's up to you to use them. So, in conclusion, Linux is great. It is open source, and while it is generally privacy focused, it's not an automatic guarantee for privacy. You have to make sure you're using the right distros, the right apps, and following the best practices. A great OS like Linux goes a long way, but ultimately your privacy is in your own hands. If this video has helped you, please drop a like. It really helps the channel, and I appreciate every one of you. That will be it for this video. Till the next one, stay safe out there.